<laughs> Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is The Paradox by Noise Reap. So, The Paradox is, in its essence, a two oscillator sound source. And of course, you can use these two oscillators independently and you can sequence them uh, separately from each other. Uh, but where this module truly starts to sing is if you start combining those two signals together. And this uh, module offers so much capabilities in, in that regard, where you can sync those uh, oscillators, where you can do self-modulation from uh, one of the oscillators and then using that to frequency modulate uh, the other and vice versa. And this just offers a wealth of sound exploration and experimentation even. Um, so what I want to do is I don't want to spoil any of the surprises uh, up front. I do have to thank Cody over at uh, Noise Reap again for uh, making sure that we were able to make this actual episode. Uh, so for now, I would just say, hope you're sitting down, got some snacks with you, maybe something to drink. And um, here we go. So here we have the paradox by Noise Reap, which is the third of the Noise Reap modules I'm reviewing on this channel. Uh, you've seen the foundation and you've seen Anomaly and you have might of course already seen the th three times VCA, uh, which I haven't actually featured in a video of its own, uh, but still it's my most favorite VCA out there. So um, it, it, I might do a dedicated video on that sometime in the future, but don't get me wrong, it does deserve all of the attention it can get. But today's star of the show is of course Paradox, which is a dual oscillator sound source. And I think that I'm doing it an injustice by just describing it like that. Uh, because at first I didn't quite understand what I was able to do with this, this, this great module. And it took me a while to really start and understand it. But what I want to do in this video, I just want to explain the module a bit more and then finally also show some of the great things I've been able to, to do with this. And also make sure that you understand how this is probably like the, well, one of the most interesting uh, oscillators or sound sources that I've played with in my short Eurorack time. So, um, but that being said, let's uh, don't waste any more time and just dive right in. So what you'll see on the paradox is immediately you're going to see these two oscillators. So both of them have their own dedicated uh, frequency settings. So you've got your, uh, your, your your regular one and you've got your fine tune set in there. And then you've got actually three volt per octave ins. So you've got your, um, your, your linked one. So if you want to have the same volt per octave signal going to both oscillators, you can use that one and you've got a dedicated one for, os for oscillator one and a dedicated one for oscillator two. Then both of these oscillators do offer um, special things of their own, I might say. So for oscillator one, you've got two outputs. You've got your, uh, your saw output and you've got your, um, your triangle output. And let's have a quick listen to both of them straight away. So here we get the actual saw. As you can see, it already has a lot of color to it. And you can just immediately recognize what this will bring to the table. But what the other thing is that Oscillator 1 offers is the self-modulation. So that will then in turn take a part of that signal and send it back into itself. And what will then happen is something like this. And if we then take the second output, which is the triangle, Again, this is the, the pure oscillation, the triangle shape. And as you can see, it's a really nice and tight triangle shape. It's very rich. You might already pick up on that. But if you then add some self-modulation into that, you get this nice buzzing sound added to it.
What you'll then also see is that you've got your external frequency modulation there too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a signal from the owner, which is right there, and I'm just going to patch that into the external frequency modulation in. So this is very recognizable as being frequency modulation, of course. That's something you can find on most oscillators, of course. So that's not, not something special, but I do appreciate that with adding that, you can actually use, well, oscillator one as any of your other oscillators. Um, but where it gets really interesting is once you start to introduce oscillator two, uh, because oscillator two does have a dedicated pulse wave output and it's got a, a PWM input, so pulse width modulation input. And as I said, so this also has its own full proactive in. And what you can then do is you can sync both of these together. So you may you, you, you say, okay, well, I'm gonna sync oscillator one to oscillator two by flipping that switch, or you can use an external sync input. So let's have a quick look and listen to what that means. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna listen to oscillator one again. And this is then the signal if you uh, sync it to oscillator 2. Or you can just grab any other oscillator. I'm just going to grab the pulse output from the owner. So you've got the heart sync input there too. Okay, so let's have a quick listen on the pulse width, sorry, on the on the pulse signal. There you go. And as said, you can then indeed use the pulse width modulation there too. So I've got a... Oh, that's a bit quick. So this takes uh, minus three to plus three volts, which I, is great for the owner because I'm just using that as an LFO right now. So that's just something, that's just nice. So what we then want to do is we want to use the combined output, uh, which is going to be combining the pulse and the saw like this. And I just want to make sure they're a bit in tune. Something like this, probably good enough for now. And what you can then do is start to play with things like the self modulation again. So I'm just going to add some self-modulation to oscillator 1. Which will, of course, make sure that the, the oscillators are slightly detuned. So this adds a lot of um, dynamics to your sound. And I like that. I, I love this, 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 this approach to it. And then, of course, you can actually make sure that these two are then starting to frequency modulate each other. And because they're now nicely tuned, you don't hear that that much. But if I slightly detune them... So one of the things I like to do is I want to make sure that, that oscillator 2 is just an octave below of uh, octave 1. So both are now on. Let's make sure we just grab A2. This might not be the best tuning I've ever done, but... This is approximately an octave between them. 
And if you then increase the frequency modulation amount and add some self modulation, I think this is just beautiful. You can create so many beautiful wave shapes with this. So let's turn this all down and make sure that these things are uh, are tuned again. as good as we can tune them by hand, of course. So what I then want to do is I want to introduce a bit of melody. So as always, I'm going to be using the Hermit as my melody source, as my sequence source. And I'm just going to connect this to the one volt link. So it's still pretty much in sync. And let's uh, play something. And just by playing with the self-modulation and the FM amount, you can get quite nice dynamics in your wave shape and in the sound that you're getting. And you might even consider just switching the heart sync on. So the slight detuning that's happening by self-modulation is causing for great approaches there. And then of course you might say, okay, well that's great. And as I said, you can then just take oscillator two and just tune it a, uh, an octave below. So just tune it to, um, what's it, G4. And you can do great things with this. Or you can just do it by hand and just... Some of these off-key dynamics and then just play with anything you might want. Make sure that you play with the sync, yes or no. So this is just great. And then of course, the other key thing is, you can also say, well, I'm just gonna patch this sequence into oscillator one. Or you can just take another sequence altogether and patch that into Oscillator 2. Then you might want to do uh, So this is of course 
garbage. This is this is this is worthless currently, uh, but it does open up a lot of doors to what we are looking for. Um, so there are some other things that you can do. Of course, you can of course start by. Oh, I just nick the camera a bit. There you go, and we're back. And the other key thing is, of course, you can of course always self patch this thing together. And maybe say, oh well, I'm going to take the uh, the sort outputs and use it as PWM. And maybe turn this down a bit. Or one thing you could also do is just take this and patch that into the external FM. Maybe sync that even. There are so many crazy things you can do. How about we just take this and we then take the output and get that into the, well, let's into the one volt proactive and see what we can do. This is of course great for creating dynamic drones. I love this. Right now, I'm probably losing like 90% of my audience, uh, but I did promise you that I had found some really nice hidden gems here. So let me just make sure that we have both of these oscillators tuned nicely. Okay, so right now they're nicely detuned, which is not a big problem. So as I said, one of the things that we can then do is we can make sure that we can add a sequence to this, to both of them. And this is of course a nice sequence to work with. But one of the things I found that if you have this connected to the link and if you then add another sequence to the Volt Proctive In, and I prefer to do that on the second one. you get this nice added composition. So if you then say, oh, I only want to listen to oscillator one, that's just gonna be the original one. And if you then just listen to the second one, this is going everywhere. But then the combined output is something that, even though it's not in key, but it is very musical to me. So I, I, I immediately fell in love with this approach. And I said, okay, well, how about we build something about this? So what this actually does, it takes two of these sequences coming from the Hermit. And what I then did is I just I just combined the, the gate signals uh, from, from these two sequences. And I just used a, an un unbuffered mold. I just threw both of them together and I then immediately patch that into any sort of well, envelope that you might find. So right now I'm using the boundary because that is the thing that I'm, well, I still need to review. And if I then patch this music into the boundary and make sure that we get that. And the nice thing about the boundary is it's, it's got a, well, it's got a VCA built in as well. And I just love this crazy sequence that we now got by combining two sequences into a double oscillator module. And I just want to build upon this. So another thing we would then want to do is I want to grab that same, well, trigger sequence that we're now using to trigger boundary. And I'm patching that into 
the, the, the OCD and the ECD by CM Modular, which is a, a well, an odd clock divider combined with an even clock divider, and you can then link them together. It's a great thing. I'm gonna do a full review of that um, in the coming weeks as well. And what I then do is I just grab the, well, the one third output, or sorry, the, the, the one uh, over two output, and I use that to trigger foundation, which is again, a great, oh sorry, let me just refocus the camera there, which is of course a great bass drum. And again, it's 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 from Noise Reap, and they are slowly becoming one of my, no, not slowly, they have become uh, one of my favorite um, builders out there. And because of the crazy rhythms that we now get, uh, this all immediately has a bit of a tribal feel to me, and I, I, I truly appreciate that as well. So what I then want to do is I just want to grab something. I want to get a nice drone in as well. So again, I'm going to grab the, the owner, and I'm not going to give that any sort of sequence. I'm just going to grab all three of its outputs. So I'm going to grab the, let's see, what do we have here? I'm going to grab the the pulse outputs and the first sub output and the third sub outputs. And I'm then going to patch that into just a low pass filter. I've got the MRG one here. So I'm just going to use that there. And then I'm going to use the, yeah, I'm just going to use the envelope output from boundary to open up that filter. There you go. Sorry for the hiccup there. And make sure that we have something there. Here we go. Need to add a bit. That's quite nice. Let's just play with that a bit. already getting quite nice right uh, let's add a bit of the snare drum to it again I'm going to be using the proc there patch that into the mixer play a bit with the tuning there. Uh, I, do, I do seem to always keep tweaking the, well, uh, the frequency there. Uh, which of course has to do with all of the things that I'm now using to modulate all of this. So another key thing that you can then grab, of course, is you can start adding a bit of pulse width modulation to it if you want. Which might not always make as much sense. 
But, but what I want to do is I just want to quickly turn on sync to let you listen to what this actually does. So you get that whole harmonization of all the other oscillations, you just lose them. And if you then turn it off, you do get a lot more back. So what I then want to do is I, I just want to quickly add a bit of reverb to it. So apologies for this. And I'm just going to connect this right there. And I'm just going to grab it like this. actually just want to take this a bit lower and if you ever get detuned the only thing you have to do is just pause this and just um, make sure you just put it back where it needs to be If you're ever uncertain of where your tuning is, you can always just uh, quickly repatch it. So what I then do is I just quickly just um, disconnect this one and just grab this. No worries about anything playing at the same time. And you just grab what you have. What did I now do? I just disconnected something which I shouldn't have done. listen to this and see where we at
and try that again. And you can then of course start playing around with all of the, uh, the tunes that you have. just keep on looking for these these hidden gems in your uh, sequences and it's one of the things I, I truly have fallen in love with and this is something that the paradox really unlocked for me something I've truly fallen in love with and yeah it's, it's just one of those things right I truly love what you're capable of achieving with this. So what I typically do in these sort of things is I just keep pressing generate random sequence on Hermits and I do make sure that it's all scaled to a certain scale. So in this case I'm using Pentatonic Minor uh, for both sequences and it just works like a charm. And I do have to uh, give credit to Sintador who actually pointed this out to me.
one of the other cool things then is, of course, you can just easily add... Um, so now I've got just the owner creating something like a bass sound. Uh, but what you can actually do is you can actually just say, okay, well, I, just want, I don't want to use the owner as a bass sound, and I just want to grab, um, well, maybe just the, the Paradox Oscillator 1 and just patch that in. So right now we're just listening to Oscillator 1. If we then add the combined signal, you get this nice, rich, sound designy, almost well, EDM kind of well intermixing of sounds and melodies, which I truly like. But it still has a rather tribal approach to me because I've made everything depending on the actual combination of sequences. Uh, the, the bass drum, as you can hear, I'm just gonna turn the... Um, this is completely based on the sequences that we add here. So if I grab something that doesn't have as many, well, uh, triggers, so if I then turn it to... Uh, you will hear that the bass drum will not be triggered as often. just maybe make some changes to the bass drum itself. The bass drum is evolving as well. I'll just turn all of this down. Because remember what I did is I just told the the bass drum to trigger on on every second trigger coming from the sequence, which is combined by sequences A and B. That's just great, but I, I just keep playing with this. So I, I do hope that you like these kind of jams that I do, and I hope this has explained a bit about the actual potential of Paradox when you combine it with a well, with, with a with a nice sequencer or a at least a dual channel sequencer like the Hermit and if you didn't then just throw in a couple of other sounds and you you add a bit to it you can make these rich well soundscapes that you can then play with and it's just it's just great and I love it so um, I'm not going to bother you any longer. Let's go back to the studio and wrap this up, shall we? Cheers. Thanks so much.
I hope you enjoyed this video on the Paradox by Noise Reap. And I do have to apologize for uh, maybe going a bit overboard with the uh, with the jam at the end. But I was just having such a good time. And I thought, well, every time I really find a, a module that I truly say, okay, well, I enjoy this. I... Um, I, I re this really brings out my creativity. I try to, well, make sure that everyone feels that enthusiasm that I have by, by doing these sort of jams. Um, but please let me know uh, by using the thumbs up, thumbs down, if you have any sort of feedback on that. So if you did enjoy that jam or if you want me to focus on a bit more other things, because that's of course the only way how I can grow professionally and personally, of course. So uh, let me know. And if you uh, don't want to use the comment section, just drop me a line at jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl. I'm always looking to uh, find ways to better myself and better the channel. That being said, I do want to thank Cody over at Noise Reap for producing, well, these great modules. So this has been the third video I've done on um, any of his. And you might have seen that I'm also using the three times VCA, which has become my favorite VCA in a short amount of time. Um, I'm probably, I might do a dedicated video on that later on. Uh, but for now, I could just say, well, the things I really appreciate about it is its responsiveness and its, well, the way how you can perform with it because it's very easy to make those nice tweaks that you want to do on a VCA where you want to have something ring a bit lo longer or a bit shorter that's exactly what we uh, what we wanted there so Cody has also been teasing one of the things that he's working on currently and he mentioned a couple of things to me like have you ever thought about a uh, analog BIA and I'm like okay well that's interesting oh yeah but it's actually a filter and a wave folder and it's all it's all in the same module I'm like okay well I'm really intrigued so I'm looking forward to uh, see what noise reap has in store for us in 2022 um, I do want to also use this opportunity to make sure that I want to extend all my best wishes um, to everyone and especially of course the people that have been supporting this channel over the course of the last year uh, it's been a, a great journey for me and I uh, I can't believe the amount of feedback and the amount of people I've been able to reach over the course of these months and well everyone that's ever watched one of my videos has been a tremendous support for me everyone that take has taken a uh, a, sh a moment to just comment everyone that was able to just do a thumbs up or a subscribe even everyone had such an impact on me and that's just great and I do want to thank you for that so again make sure that we make 2022 a very safe and healthy year uh, but that being said I would say everyone make sure that you stay safe stay healthy and I see you for my next video cheers <laughs>